Susan, uh, I assume that you're not or ha were not in favour of this legislation. No, um, absolutely not. Um, and um, a lot of the concerns that we raised were also raised by um, the UN Special Rapporteur on Violence Against Women and Girls, um, and also um, by the EHRC, which is responsible for the oversight of the Equality Act and its operation across the UK. And this is the area now that the UK, one of the areas now that the UK government have to consider as to whether or not this bill is competent. Indeed, that's the big question, is that there are some people saying, aside from the legislation itself, you know, the arguments around the transgender issue, it's a big question about the legality of all of this. In saying that, there are many people who in Scotland will be sitting there saying, you know, we've got a devolved parliament, it's a democracy. It wasn't just the SNP who voted for this as well, but also opposition MSPs. Why should they have their right to not deny? That's, that's how the parliamentary process should work in the democracy. Well, the parliamentary process also should work in accordance with the uh, Scotland Act, which was something that was voted for by the SNP and by Labour back in the day. It was actually opposed by the Conservatives. And Section 35 is an integral part of the Scotland Act. And that's because some areas of legislation are reserved to Westminster. That is the settlement we have got. And the um, Scottish Parliament is not supposed to trespass upon those areas. And what they have done in passing this bill, we believe, um, is to trespass um, upon the operation of the Equality Act. And that has implications not just in Scotland, but across the UK. So they are effectively, they have effectively voted to change and undermine the law and the position it, the equality position for women and trans people in the rest of the UK as well as Scotland. And that is not democratic. That is not, that it, that would not be accepted by Nicola Sturgeon if it had happened the other way around. In saying that, many people have suggested that actually this has been a deliberate strategy by the SNP to try and provoke this type of debate, to try and, if you like, entice the Prime Minister into uh, uh, using Section 35 of the Scotland Act. Isn't the concern is, is that for opponents of this bill, again, either way of where you stand on it, that actually what you are doing is helping the SNP out. You're, you're helping them in a row because they will use this as an example again of how Westminster is, is overruling Scotland. Well, they might. But um, as I say, the fact is that this is how um, our devolved settlement is supposed to work. And... Um, they, they have argued and will continue to argue that they want complete independence, but um, they ought to be careful because this bill is incredibly unpopular across Scotland and the process by which it passed through the Scottish Parliament was inadequate, to say the least. Um, there was a hugely stacked committee process. There was not proper scrutiny. They did not consult properly um, on the cross-border implications, the international implications. They did not look, um, they, they dismissed evidence from experts who were um, took an opposing view. And of course, there is no um, second um, legislative chamber in Scotland. Um, there is no revising chamber. And indeed, some of the Labour MSPs during the stage one debate were saying, oh, inevitably, this may end up in court. Well, several pieces of legislation have ended up in court for the Scottish government over recent years and have been found to be um, unlawful. And it seems to be that there's an acceptance within but, the Scottish Parliament. But, That's how you legislate, and it shouldn't be. 